when I was mayor before is when we started the council chats. And that was a project that I brought. I've always been trying to find new ways to communicate. Um, the most v vibrant, if you want to call that, was when there was a lawsuit going on between neighbors and they brought it to the council meetings and then the police had to get involved because it got um, a little bit not the direction of opening it for council chats. When that was resolved, we sat here one night and nobody showed up. Um, we sat here a couple of times and we'd had two people show up. So the attendance, I, I understand the opportunity, but we did a year, of a, a year of an opportunity. What happens is when you're mayor, you have whatever your vision is and you don't necessarily have to continue. I started those council chats and they were not continued. Um, there wasn't support by enough of the council members to continue it. I started the study sessions by an ability to sit and have an open discussion because it's difficult to do more of an informal discussion with the Brown Act situation. We found out that this was a way we could do it and it meets all the legal requirements, the ability for people to come forward and have the discussion. We had one in the evening. Again, nobody but staff and council was here. So it gets to a point when you say the opportunity, and I know we say, well, you tried it before, let's try it again. You're tying up um, staff time because staff has to be here um, for an opportunity. I, I'm more than happy to try again. I just don't get the support from everybody. Um, but we've, that's why we have other means that we're working on this year. That's the mayor's message going out. Because it's not just a communication, it's also sharing of information. And it's, I know it's one-sided, but I'm involving other people in. And I, and I truly believe that the best conversations are those that are open and relaxed. We did not have the council chaps were filmed. Um, and the reason being is we were asked not to film them by the couple of people that did attend. They are intimidated. That's why they don't come to a council meeting because they're intimidated on being filmed. So if we would move that forward, I would also, again, probably not have us be filming the, the council chats. For the few that want to sit home and watch instead of coming here, it's more comfortable for people knowing that they're not being filmed. They get nervous for whatever reason. Um, so that's my response for that. I'm, I'm always open for new ideas, new ways we can communicate. But when you try things and they're not as successful as you like to be, it's very hard to continue things on. And that's what my colleagues had found is why they didn't continue. Now, to change subjects on a couple of things that are coming up. On the ladders in Linguini, I put tickets and everything, and all I got was two tools, two toolkits. That's what I won was two toolkits. Go figure. Um, we do have the study session next week at 2.30, and that's going to be going over the strategic plan. So if anybody's wanting to hear the consultant report on the strategic plan, that is next Wednesday at 2.30. The following weekend, there is going to be the um, Corona Knuckle Schools Education Foundation, their annual spring carnival, and that will be at Corona High School this year. So if you want to come out and support the school education program, that's a separate nonprofit private foundation that's not affiliated with the school district. It's a group of people that formed a foundation to help supplement the needs for the schools. Also on the 29th is the Special Olympics. If you've ever participated in that, I do every year they're here. That will be at Centennial High School in the football stadium. And it's a great event, 9 a.m. Centennial High School for Special Olympics. And then on April 2nd, the Women's Leadership Series, um, the topic is Some Mean Kids Don't Grow Up. It's about adult bullying. So that's an interesting topic. And then on um, April 12th, the Chronological Day of the Child. This is an incredible event to bring your kids, your grandkids, to come and enjoy the city park. It's a beautiful park. And there will be vendors and activities for all children. And it's a day for parents to come out, learn about some of the programs here within the city of Corona, the county, um, for your children, and also just a fun free day for your kids to be at the park. Food will cost, but all the activities are supposed to be free. <clears throat> With that last council meeting I shared, and we um, 
had the meeting in memory of um, Leona Campling. And since then, we had another very um, involved community member who gave a tremendous amount to our community, and that's uh, George Preves. And he passed away of a sudden um, illness, sudden heart attack. He was the epitome of life. He was the epitome of what an immigrant coming to this country and making the United States his home. In fact, just before, um, when he had died, before he died, he was having a party to celebrate 50 years of being here and thanking those that helped him become the man he had become. Um, he has given so much to this community, and it's truly, truly a loss. So please keep the Pavez family in your thoughts and prayers. And with that, we're going to adjourn this meeting in memory of George Pavez, and we will reconvene on April 2nd.